Coming up, yesterday, Representatives Martinez and Miller were in the Santa Fe Library talking to government students. That plus more on this week's episode of The Howl. But first, this. Okay, oh, I, I think I fixed it. Finally. joined with Nick Gee and Elijah Depona with this week's news. Okay, okay. Let's get this over with, you know? Yeah. Weird news. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I'm transparent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, weird news. Go okay. hit us, hit us, hit us. Okay. So, a family in South Carolina finds 44 pounds of cocaine in the ocean and gives it back to the police. Why would you do that? I, I would sell that thing, bro. Wow. Dude, know, Bobby, Breaking Bad is, bro. I would give it to the police. That's so much money. <laughs> so much money. You know how much money it costs for one gram of that? That's 44 pounds. It's crazy. Okay, hit us up. Okay. Next one. University of Washington professor claims that SpongeBob SquarePants, the television show, yep. is violent, racist, and linking it to the Bikini Atoll nuclear bomb. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> what? Couldn't, Couldn't agree, agree more. more. Hmm. And, uh... Squirrels at 200 walnuts over half a trash can full underneath the hood of a family's SUV. Now that's what we call going nutty, huh? Under the trash mm -hmm. can. It's <laughs> truly nuts, man. It's truly nuts. Truly. <laughs> and then schools come up with a solution to, like, end all our waste. You want to know how it is? You want to know what they do? I got you on this one. Taking all the waste, all the scraps, and giving it to the pigs. Exactly, exactly. That's what they do. They just feed it to the pigs. Amazing. Feed it to the pigs. The, p the bacon you're eating, just remember that. Oh, that's nice. That's great. Okay, okay. get us the next one. Next one. An Iowa man finds five inches of animal blood in his basement after flooding. How he got there, we don't know. We don't How know. he cleaned it out, we don't, we don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> and next. This one was from around Halloween, and I think it's suiting because an FBI agent found a horrific crime of, like, this body, like a Frankenstein monster. Like, he stitched all these parts together and made, like, an actual human in, like, a human body part <laughs> donation center. That's kind of legendary. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not even going to lie. Actually, That's kind of legendary, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. Okay, here's one more. One, one last one. One more, one more. And, uh, oh yeah, Florida Man of the Week. Yes. Florida Man of the Week. You guys ready for this one? All right, oh, go. God help this country. <laughs> God help that state. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Florida Man gets a screwdriver surgically removed from his rectum. Now, how he removes it, we cannot say on the television. Although, I think we can all agree. We know exactly how we got it in there. In okay, the first yes. Place. That's us for Weird News, okay? Yeah, that's oh, okay. Okay. Peace. All right, thanks. Okay, moving on. We have some movie reviews from our crew here at Broadcasting. They had a review over The Witch, which seems pretty cool. I personally enjoy hor horror movies. I think it's decently exciting. The other movie review they had was The Lighthouse, which right off the bat seems pretty interesting. I think I know what I'm going to do when I get home.
lighthouse. Anyways, what'd you think about it? I liked it. I liked it a lot. What'd you like about this movie? Uh, the cast was pretty good. The whole two people that were in it. Yeah, Willem Dafoe and uh, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> Anyways, what was it about? Uh, so, uh, Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe, they're lighthouse keepers on an island, and, uh, and madness ensues. Yeah. That, that's about it. We, we both have no idea what was going on. It, uh, you can interpret everything in the movie differently. Yeah, I interpret it as maybe like a Greek myth, Greek mythological type thing. Yeah. How, how like Prometheus or Icarus. It, it was shot on black and white. Like it was actually shot like on black and white film. Really constrained aspect ratio. It, it, it looked like an old style movie, like a Charlie Chaplin type thing. What would you rate it? Uh, probably a 9 out of 10, honestly. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 as well. Alright. Anyways, what was our next movie that we were reviewing? The Witch. It's from uh, 2016, and it's from the same director as The Lighthouse. What was that one about? Uh, so this colonial family, like, they get kicked out of their town. They have to move out into, like, the woods, and then there's, like, a witch, and madness ensues. Both these movies, they have, like, really specific dialects that are kind of hard to understand at points. One of the better ones we've reviewed. Yeah, um, it feels very real, like, to the time. Like, it, like, if you're immediately, you're, like, immersed into these movies, like, yeah. It's like, okay, I believe it, you know? Yeah, it's like, hey! It never feels fake. <laughs> I'm about to be burnt at a stake. Yeah! <laughs> Anyways, what'd you like about this movie? The, the, well, as we said before, the dialect. Yeah. That, that's really what made the movie pretty much for me. The acting, everyone the loved act the dialect. It's like, there's even like little kids in the movie and they do it perfectly, like it's weird. Yeah, usually child actors are terrible. Yeah. The, the witch was, she was like, freaky, freaky dinky. You only saw her for like two shots, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, you see her flying on a broomstick and it actually, it doesn't look stupid though. <laughs> the goat. Yeah. I'm not saying the greatest of all time, but I'm saying the goat, like the goat, yeah, the, 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 the goat, <laughs> the goat, yeah, Black Philip, man, he's so cool. What kind of stupid name is Black Philip? It's a name you give a goat. <laughs> Besides that, uh, you know, what would you rate the movie, just in general? Probably about the same as the Lighthouse, so nine out of ten. Yeah, I like I like this movie. I like the Lighthouse uh, that much more. Huh? I like the Lighthouse that much more. Well, yeah, but what is that increment supposed to be? Is that supposed to be like a one, a two, or what? what is it? Yikes. Okay, well, this has been Lance and Layla's movie review. I'm, <laughs> I'm Lance. Uh, I'm Layla. Hope um, you enjoyed. Bye. I'm going to give The Witch 9 out of 10. Tonight is our last home game for the football team in regular season. Come out and support your Wolves on senior night. We need to pack the house tonight because tonight's game determines our playoff season. Earlier this week, our very own yearbook staff, the Santa Fe Archives, went out to Norman for an annual OSM Awards where they won an All Oklahoma Award, meaning they were in the top three in the state for last year's book. They also won a golden <laughs> gold at nationals. <laughs> Way to go, your book. Congratulations, and keep up the good work. In local news, Matt Damon in Coyle, Oklahoma, filming for his new movie, Stillwater. He'll be in town through the 15th, according to our, or according to local sources. I know where I'm going this weekend, and it's not going to be the soccer fields of Edmond Soccer Club. During this last Sunday, Turkey's sh during this last Sunday's Turkey Shootout tournament, two coaches were suspended due to an altercation with a refer referee. In the video of one of the coaches is seen shoving a teenage referee during a match. The OSA, the Oklahoma's National or Oklahoma so Soccer Association, received a misconduct report about the game between Lawton and Midwest City. Eleven-year-olds on one coach from each team was suspended pending further investigation. Wow, that makes me glad I don't volunteer as a ref for soccer on the weekends. But in lighter news, the city of Edmond just approved a new bill for residents who have solar panels on their homes to store the power they don't use and receive a credit on their energy bill later on. And now for tonight's main story. Sage Hansen and Natalie Kavana, 
sat down with Representatives Martinez and Miller while they were on campus yesterday talking to the seniors and government, government classes about their role as representatives in Oklahoma government. And, n and the students can be more active as well. Here's Sage with more on the topic. Hello, my name is Natalie Cavanaugh, and today Representatives Ryan Martinez and Nicole Miller came to talk to the senior government class about their opinions, and Sage and I got the opportunity to sit down and interview them. So, we represent Ed. So, probably to our constituents, so like, I don't really get it, whatever. Yeah, go to our state for the watermelon and stuff like that. So, so it's kind of hard to, to grasp. So I'll have all the time of one of my constituents calling, like, what is the deal with this wacky guy from the state? What is your name and what do you do? All right, so my name is Ryan Martinez. I'm a state representative for House District 39, which is kind of central and to West Edmond. So I am Nicole Miller. I represent House District 82. So it is Upper Northwest Oklahoma City, West Edmond, and Deer Creek. What is your favorite part about talking to high school age students? Yeah, I think it's really neat to, uh, so representative government is supposed to be us representing the ideas of the people around us and being able to engage with uh, high school students, sometimes you hear a very different perspective, and it's an important perspective that sometimes we don't, we don't hear often. So it's great to hear the creativity and some of the energy of some of the students that are um, considering what they want to do in life or you know, uh, kind of what their next step is. It's very neat to me to kind of hear what that looks like and uh, kind of some of their ideas and what they're thinking about. Yeah, I think it's because it always um, helps me remember uh, why we do what we do. Um, and how important it is to hear from um, not only you know a certain age group or a certain demographic, but to hear from everyone across our districts. Um, and, and what the young people are thinking, that's really where the future's going. Could you give me a few of your key points that you talked about today and why you think that they're important? So um, we talked about criminal justice reform, um, something that we are dealing with a lot at the state and um, how we handle that and, and what that's going to look like going forward. We talked about the structure of government, too, and, and pretty much the process of bills when they're going through the legislature. Uh, one of the things that was neat to me, <clears throat> excuse me, that we had a conversation about was just what a life of being a legislator is like. I think a lot of times we forget because we're around a lot of legislators, we're legislators, that most people don't know what our life looks like. So just being able to kind of share what a day-to-day uh, yeah, what a day is for us in the life of legislators is pretty neat. Um, so that was one of my favorite parts that we talked about. Wow, that sure gave me a good perspective on what they do. Definitely. I think they have a lot of good points. Well, that's all for this week. I'm Grant Mahaney. And I'm Matilda Mahaney. And from all of us here at the Howl, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.